Okay, before we get to the last two JavaScript things, including the parallax scrolling and the lightbox effect, um, I want to go ahead and just address some basic styling stuff for some of the other sections. Um, and for the most part, I'm going to be sort of motoring through it uh, just for the sake of time, uh, but you can always slow down and pause and take a look and stuff. But what we have left that's pretty important is we have <clears throat> the uh, DL lists. So here and here, and because it uh, covers two different sections, since we're using DL lists in both of them, then I probably won't make them section specific, but I need to make those. And we also need to deal with styling the portfolio thumbnails. And lastly, we need to do something about this contact area. And I'm gonna go ahead and address the contact area first, I think. So where it uh, has YouTube, Facebook, and so on. Of course, you could just leave those as um, as uh, regular text links, but you know it's a lot nicer if you use icons. And you can always go and do a web search for social media icons. And I went ahead and I made some SVG icons. And um, I recommend that uh, if you know how to make stuff, you can make them. But there are lots of free icons available on the web that you can either use or tweak or whatever. And uh, they don't have to be SVGs. I like SVGs, though, because they scale very nicely. But I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to go into my images folder. And I'm going to paste the SVGs that I made. So I've got one for Facebook, Google+, LinkedIn, Twitter, and YouTube. Okay. And for some reason, the YouTube one's not showing up, but it looks fine. Okay. So in my HTML, so let's go in my HTML and find the skills, or not, excuse me, the skills, the uh, contact area. And what I need to do is I, I'm going to place the image right here instead of where it says YouTube. I'm just going to put an image tag there. And so this is what replaced the word YouTube. And it's an IMG source. And uh, it's basically just going to grab the YouTube one and the alt text is going to say YouTube. So I'm going to do that on all of these. Okay, so I went ahead and took the time to do that so you don't have to watch me do it. And I put all of the uh, image sources in for these. So um, they're going to look a little wonky. We can save it and take a peek though. And uh, just look. And I'll just scroll down to the bottom real fast. And they are gigantic, right? Because they're SVGs. OK, so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to put them in floats. And I'm going to take care of the spacing. So let's go into our CSS. And I'm going to go down to the bottom <clears throat> because it's the contact uh, section. And the contact section is the very last one. I'm going to come down, down here, and I'm going to put it right there. And I'm, I'm just going to paste everything for my contact. I'm going to explain it so that you don't have to watch me think through it and type. So <clears throat> um, first of all, this is the general contact section rule. And I want the text to align center. That's effectively going to deal with my normal text. And you know, like my email address that I have. And uh, I have a background color that I think that I want to apply. I think I want to go ahead and give this a shot so that it looks different um, than the rest of the page, especially since it's the bottom. And I, th I think I'd like to have a big, heavy, solid border at the bottom that's a little bit dark to kind of weight the bottom. So that's going to take care of the entire contact section. Um, and then the UL that's in the contact is going to be the UL that has all my um, uh, social media icon lists or list items. So each of those, uh, excuse me, not each of those, but the, the UL itself is going to be a total of 75% width. And the margin on top and bottom is 1M, automatic, so that they stay centered, and so that it stays centered. And then the padding, again, 1M, top and bottom. And then because it's going to have floated items inside of it, I have overflow hidden assigned to that UL. And then, of course, this is the list item section. And uh, I'm not sure why. I don't need to have that, I don't think. I don't need to tell it to be display block. List items are inherently display block. Um, so I want to have a float left and so that they're going to float to the left. And I'm going to tell each list item to be 20% since I have five of the uh, icons. And um, 
I also, well, 20 times 5, you know 100. And then for the image, this I do want to tell it to be a display block. That's probably what I was thinking up here. Uh, but anyway, I want the IMG to be display block. And again, I probably don't have to have this exactly this way since I'm doing SVGs. But if you're using PNGs or anything else, you have to do display block with 60%. Uh, otherwise, if you don't, by the way, do display block, it'll have this little weird uh, margin down at the bottom. Um, anyway, I'm going to tell them to only be 60% of their parent container. And uh, because I'm having it be 60%, and that is another reason that it has to be display block so that I can tell it to have automatic margins so that it centers it. And I'm also telling it that I don't want the width to be any greater than 80 pixels. I don't want those icons getting any bigger than that because I think that they'll start to look really weird. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. We'll do a test. And let's see how the contact area looks. And it looks good. It looks exactly the way I was expecting it to look. And we'll deal with the tiny icons uh, a little bit later whenever we get to um, uh, dealing with our media queries. But for now, we'll just leave that alone. And you can see when it gets big, it still looks nice. And you could make this, uh, it's referred to as a mail to link. I'm not going to do that because uh, a lot of times that's how spam will catch you. And a lot of times, they'll, people, you know, you really shouldn't even be putting your email address directly on. But if you have a mail to, then it can actually use it as a spam relay. So, all right, that's a good starting place. I want to address, I think, as the next item, the portfolio stuff. And even though I'm not going to be applying the lightbox stuff to it yet, we can still apply rules that will make these look a lot better. Okay, so this uh, web development, that's an H3. If you want to sort of revisit this up here, you'll see that um, we have our normal header, right? And then we've got our web development header. So it's an H3 inside of the article. And uh, we also have our unordered list with our list items and so forth. Again, I'm going to paste some stuff and I'm going to explain it so it'll go a little bit faster. And because it comes before contact but after skills in the HTML, I'm going to make the CSS reflect the same. So I just pasted what looks like a ton of stuff, but honestly, it's, uh, it's not as much as it looks like. We have our H3, and again, that's just, you know, text formatting. So I'm giving it font weight, telling it to be uppercase telling it what size to be, be centered, telling it how high it should be with a line height, and I'm also telling it how wide I want it to be, and uh, margin. Okay, so that's my H3. And then I have an H3 hover. You don't have to have that either. It's not important. But I'm going to have that because later if we want the H3 to become a button, like for an accordion or a, a, like an open and close toggle thing, we, we need it to have some kind of visual indicator like a hover. So that's why I have that there. Um, future proofing I guess and um, there's this uh, UL right now uh, that we need to deal with so I'm telling it to be a hundred percent and but I want it to be a max width of 800 percent I don't want it to get too big and there's a good reason for that and that's because inside of it are going to be list items uh, that are going to have pictures down here, okay, and if those pictures go to be 100% of their list items, and the list items go to be some percentage of the uh, un unordered list, then if we're on a gigantic monitor, then those uh, thumbnails are going to be bigger than they have the uh, the potential quality to be. So we need to tell it to be a max width and I'm going to say 800 because my thumbnails I already know I'm making them to be uh, I think it's 200 pixels wide a piece. So that's 200 times 3 that's 600 with an extra 200 left over for like padding and margin and stuff like that. So that's a pretty safe bet. So anyway my unordered list is going to be 100% maxing out at 800 pixels and again, because it's going to have floated items, it's going to be an overflow hidden. Of course, I'm dealing with my margins, top and bottom. Auto is left and right. And now we have our list items. And I'm choosing to tell them to be 80%. And again, we're going to say max width for each of them is 200 pixels because that's how big my thumbnails are going to be. And I don't want them to look bad. I'm putting a 1% padding on them because 
um, I want to also have a border around them so they sort of look snapshot-like. If you want to sort of be reminded of the, the goal, of kind of what, what they're going to look like, is sort of like this, where that white right there is the padding, and then there's like a really thin border, and then what you see here is that box shadow that's around it, okay? And then because I have a hover state, the box shadow, so this uh, radius blur of five pixels on hover turns to 10 pixels, and it also becomes more opaque, so it's 70% versus 40%, and you can see that in effect, that's kind of what the effect is, all right? And um, then I need to tell the images, the anchor images, how to behave, and those are going to be block level. They're going to take up 100% of their containers, uh, which are going to be the list items, and of course we deal with the margins like this. So it's really sort of more of the same, more of the same, more of the same. Let's save that, and <clears throat> let's go ahead and take a preview, and let's see if it looks the way that we're expecting it to, and it does in fact, and the reason I have it set to be like this is um, I want you to notice something. Nowhere on here did you see a float, okay? So you didn't see me trying to float anything, and the reason for that is because we are thinking about this as a mobile-first approach. So we're thinking of it from a screen size that is small, like a phone or tablet or something, and then in our media queries, we're going to make them bigger. So don't worry about this right now. We'll deal with the media query stuff. In a little bit but right now fortunately we've got this all working and if I click on it it just opens it in a larger view uh, but we're gonna have some JavaScript later to, to deal with the the oddness of the way that that is right now it'll make it graceful and lovely okay so um, something else that we still need to deal with are all these definition lists they're pretty jammed together and ugly right now and I'm thinking that you know what we want to do is we want this to be kind of bold and set apart this will be set apart <clears throat> from the paragraph as well um, so like it might look something like not that something like this for instance where you know this is all indented so that we understand its relationship to the year um, and this stuff is going to look a little bit different okay but um, anyway, so we can create these definition lists now. Okay, so let's go back to our CSS, and like I said before, this spans two different uh, sections, so we're not going to be making, you know, like section-specific rules. What we really need to do is we need to put it up here in the page content section um, for, for those, those rules. So let's find that. That's profile still, profile rules, that's skills. And here's the page content. So after the section page content article, I'm going to come down here and I'm going to add uh, a gang of rules. Let me show you which ones I just added. So lines 160 through 173. And basically I'm creating an H3 rule that's inside of an article in the page content because uh, the definition lists in the experience section has that. And I want those to be a font weight of 700, so that's the boldest that I have. And uh, I've got the font size here. And uh, then I also have uh, my rule for the definition lists. And basically I'm telling those the top and bottom margins, but then also I want the margin left to be uh, basically half an M. And what that's going to do is it's going to push the definition list in, basically like an indent, so that you can tell that it's sort of inset as part of something else. Okay, and then our definition term has a font weight so that it's heavy, like sort of like the H3 kind of, um, because that's going to be the thing that uh, is either like your place of employment or the place that you studied. And then... Um, We've got the definition data, and I've just got a bottom margin set. Okay, so let's save that, and once again, let's take a preview, and let's see how that looks. So that looks pretty good, and it's basically what I was expecting it to look like. So I think we're pretty set.
we're good to go uh, in terms of our basic styling. So uh, let's go ahead and move on to the next demo.